Well, I get the crust! Oh, I can't take all these metaphors! Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the most iconic or impactful antagonists in the Digimon franchise. Hide like rats in a hole if you wish. Nothing can withstand my power! Number 20, Menowa Baluchi. There's nothing inherently wrong about wanting Digi destined to remain with their digital partners forever, although kidnapping people across the globe and reverting them back to children is a bit excessive. To Menowa, however, it was worth it. She knows the pain of losing your Digimon, and if she had her way, no one else would ever experience it again. You can't help but relate to her plight, especially since the movie isn't called the last evolution for nothing. Tai and Matt stop her plan in the end, but that doesn't make the message any less affecting. If anything, Menowa's stint as a villain proved exactly why it was time for Digimon to grow up. Number 19, Meikumon. While it may look warm and cuddly, you really don't want to catch Meiko's partner on a bad day. Due to a virus in its data, Meikumon has a nasty habit of going berserk and attacking anything around her, even Meiko herself. She did evolved? The Digidestin tried to stop her, but that only triggers a dark Digivolution into Meikrakmon, and later, Ordinemon. It's one thing to beat up a bad guy, and another to destroy a former friend. Then again, when the entire human world is at stake, there isn't much of a choice. The tragic circumstances turn Meikumon into a one-of-a-kind adversary that's more pitiable than sinister. Number 18, Cherubimon. Digi-destined, beware. This is my fault. Why? Are you the one who taught him to juggle? Let us down, you clown! No matter what medium, Cherubimon is a force to be reckoned with. In the Digimon movie, he's a corrupt digital partner who tries to capture his former tamer, Wallace, by any means necessary. <laughs> I'm the one with the problem, not you. Get over it. Okay. Even if it means destroying the Digidestined, if that sounds bad, wait until you hear what the Frontier Gang has to deal with. There, Cherubimon is a fallen archangel trying to conquer the entire digital world. How can you stop me? In both appearances, Cherubimon is sadistic, all-powerful, and extremely difficult to take down. Hey, on the bright side, Cherubimon does have a purified form that uses his power for good. It's just buried really, really deep. Thank you. Number 17, Etamon. Following the impossibly creepy Devimon, Digimon Adventure opted for a villain with a bit more personality. Introducing Etamon, master of the dark network and Elvis impressions. Yeah, the concert sensation of the server continent is back. All right, it's Etamon the king. Odd English dub quicks aside, Etamon's charming villainy forced the team to reevaluate their strategy, leading to some downright legendary moments. By the time Metal Greymon rockets Etamon into oblivion, it's almost sad to see him and his Elvis impression go. Whoa, don't destroy me. I've got too much talent. Bigger blaster. Luckily, The Fiend later returns for an encore as Metal Etamon. His second act isn't as long as his first. He basically shows up, cracks a few jokes, and promptly goes blasting off again. Like any good musician, Etamon always leaves you wanting more. 
Number 16, Yukio Oikawa. Seeing is believing, unless of course, you're Yukio Oikawa. Led by a promise to a deceased friend, the disgruntled crook sought to weaken the barrier between the human and digital worlds, regardless of the consequences. It's a weak spot between the two worlds, and now the dark spores will open the gate. In doing so, Oikawa oh, oh, nearly oh, destroyed oh. everything, and yet, it's hard to judge him too harshly. Beneath the slimy veneer, he's just a kid who wants a Digimon. What? What is this place? If this isn't the digital world, then where have I brought us? Plus, Oikawa's story isn't all doom and gloom. We'd be remiss not to mention his lackeys, Arukenimon and Mummymon, who take the buddy cop grunt trope to new hilarious heights. Whether through compelling character work or dim-witted hijinks, these three made sure O2's villains were some to remember. Wait a minute! Don't you remember me? Of course. I remember you. Number 15, Gulus Gamamon. Meet Gamamon. He's a young, well-meaning Digimon with four different champion forms. The first three are friendly, the last one though, not so much. Still, Gulus Gamamon is so much more than your average evil transformation. <laughs> For one, the mystery behind his insidious motives are the driving force of Ghost Game's entire narrative. Can you blame them? Gulus Gamamon is cool, intriguing, vicious, and above all, deadly. <laughs> And that's before he digivolves into Regulusmon. Afterwards, it took the might of three Megas just to keep him at bay. Based on that, there's a good reason Ghost Game never had to introduce another main antagonist. Gulus Gamamon was all it needed. <laughs> Number 14, Ogamon. Most recurring villains show up, cause some mischief, and quickly get sent packing. But in a refreshing change of pace, Ogamon actually gets a fully fleshed out character arc. While it clashed horns with Greymon on more than a few occasions, the troll Digimon eventually learned to respect his own strength above that of his evil boss, Devimon. Then, as atonement, Ogamon points tied towards Devimon's base and sacrifices himself. <laughs> it's a surprisingly empowering end to what could have been a one-note villain, or it would have been if it was actually Ogamon's end. Later, he shows up again as the newly evolved Rebellimon, giving this former villain the happy ending he deserves. <laughs> Number 13, Duskmon. Born from the corrupt spirit of darkness, it's really no wonder Duskmon was such a thorn in the side of the Digidestined. Actually, scratch that, he's a problem for anyone who gets in his way. Full stop. Just ask Arbamon. What are you talking <laughs> oh, <gasps> Yesterday's hour is today's enemy. <laughs> He's even less merciful to the Frontier team. Not even their beast spirits were enough to compete with Duskmon's menacing bloodlust. Deadly games. Then, just when it seems it can't get any worse, the other shoe drops. Duskmon is actually Koichi, fellow Digidestined Koji's twin brother. Talk about an awkward family reunion. From unstoppable adversary to mind-controlled ally, Duskmon runs the gamut of entertaining villainy. Despite what Koichi says, that's a good thing in our book. Number 12, Lilithmon. The Bagra army isn't something to take lightly, especially with generals like Lilithmon. 
I should throw him in the dungeon and lose the key. She's a cunning strategist who conquered entire zones of the digital world on nothing more than a whim. The worst part, she barely had to lift a finger. Lilith Mon's signature game plan is getting others to fight for her, sometimes even creating new fusions in the process. But don't worry, Lilith Mon can still fight when the need arises. Heads up! While her phantom pain attacks do plenty of damage, once she merges with Blastmon, the appropriately named evil beast Lilithmon is a threat to the whole digital world. Whoever said you can't have beauty and brawn has clearly never met Lilithmon. Number 11, Diaboromon. When it comes to nefarious schemes, attempting to blow all of Tokyo off the face of the earth is pretty high on the list. But that's just Diaboromon for ya. Infermon Digimon 2? Diaboromon. Ah. As a living internet virus, it wreaked havoc on the world by shutting down banks, disconnecting phone lines, and, oh yeah, launching the aforementioned nukes. Did we mention it can multiply too? It took the debut of fan favorite Omnimon to defeat it for good, and even then, they only scraped by with a few seconds to spare. We have to give credit where it's due. There may never be another Digimon villain that comes so close to literally destroying the world. Five, four, three, uh, two, one! Connection terminated. Number 10, the D Reaper. Nothing was able to stop its unending destruction. It spread a dark pall across the digital world. And it's come back to wipe us out of existence. Talk about apocalyptic. While originally designed by humans as a program in order to keep the digital world in check, it soon ended up mutating to the point where it became a threat to both humans and Digimon alike, taking the form of a sentient blood-like creature that even managed to put multiple mega Digimon through their paces. If that wasn't scary enough, it goes on to use traumatic memories of Jerry as a way to learn more about humans, bringing us some creepy imagery that still haunts us to this very day. Your emotion will get you nowhere. The D Reaper will delete everyone. Number 9, Black War Greymon. Black War Greymon is a mega Digimon who looks like War Greymon, but he's pure evil. By far one of the most morally complex characters in the franchise, despite being born from the corrupt nature of 100 control spires, this Digimon was above all else a warrior trying to forge his own path. He managed to cripple the Digidestined on multiple occasions, brought about all kinds of calamity, and yet, through it all, became intrigued about the nature of the heart. He may look like a darker version of War Greymon, but this character was well and truly his own. And maybe one day, we could even be friends. I hope so, Black War Greymon. Number 8, Devimon. The first true villain of Digimon, this malicious being more than lives up to his demonic appearance. Now the real trouble starts. Agumon, who is that? That's Devimon. He looks bad. Whether he's infecting innocent Digimon with the black gears, or by administering the appropriately named Touch of Evil, Devimon's presence is felt all throughout File Island. Of course, he's not above getting his hands dirty either, and nearly managed to kill off Tai and company during their final confrontation, only to be defeated after getting a fistful of Angemon. Come here, pretty boy. I'll stop you. Hi. He may not be the most complicated of individuals, but he certainly set a solid foundation for all antagonists that followed. Number 7, Lucemon. As long as I have the data you collected, my resurrection will soon be complete. Regardless of any initial impressions you might have, trust us, this guy is anything but heavenly. The being responsible for the chaotic state of the digital world, this tyrant loves nothing more than to play mind games with both the legendary warriors as well as his own subordinates. Yes, but perhaps... Lord Lucimon! Yeah! I plan on keeping my promise to you. 
But first, I must destroy them. As if his cruelty and god complex weren't bad enough, he's also got some serious power under that toga. With both his chaos and shadow lord forms, he was but a breath away from bringing about the end of the human world. Unbelievable! Where is he going? He's trying to go to the human world! Oh no! Luckily, it's nothing a celestial blade to the side can't fix. <laughs> Number 6, Piedmon. <laughs> Thank you for the sparring match, War Greymon. Now I'm ready for the main event. What's worse than a scary clown? How about a scary clown armed with four swords, a psychotic mindset, and desire to slaughter anything he comes across? As the leader of the Dark Masters, Piedmon wasn't only more terrifying than Puppetmon, but was even stronger than titans like Machine Draymon and Metal Seedramon. You escaped this time. But you've escaped for the last time! His strength was astounding, his clownish attributes were unnerving, and in many ways, stood as the last true antagonist for the original Digidestin to fight against. Nothing against his follow-up, Apocalymon, but the Psycho Jester was in a different league altogether. Clown trick! <laughs> Number 5, Bagramon. So, the simplicity of this guy is almost admirable. He has one mission and one mission alone, destroy everything. As the leader of the Bagra army, this antagonist proved to be quite the obstacle for the fusion fighters, to the point where the only way to beat him involved our hero literally absorbing every single Digimon in existence. Though, what would you expect from someone known around the digital world as the Sage of Death? The guy was even willing to kill and absorb his own brother. <laughs> Number 4, Beelzemon. No, to have power is to be strong. I'll keep loading data till no one can stop me. No one! For the majority of the series, Impmon was nothing more than an annoyance that the Tamers and their partners had to deal with on repeated occasions. He could be loud and crass, but he certainly wasn't any kind of threat. That is, until he digivolved into his mega form, got himself a motorcycle, as well as a brand new murderous attitude. Then he became very threatening. Hello, kiddies. Beelzemon! You're not with your friends now, are you, punks? Oh well, I guess I'll just have to annihilate them later. While he would ultimately go on to redeem himself, there's no denying Beelzemon made quite the impact as a villain. Killing Leomon with his bare hands, we're still not over that. <laughs> Number 3, Dr. Karata and Belfimon. If there's a victim you should feel sorry for in this little story, it's me. One is a legendary being known for its unparalleled thirst for destruction, and the other is a cowardly human researcher with delusions of grandeur. <laughs> oh well, one of my creations has been defeated. But that was only one. I have many more. Put them together and what do you get? Enough brain and brawn to bring ruin to both worlds. Due to his megalomaniac tendencies and utter fear for Digimon in general, Dr. Karata decides to use Belfimon's untold power to try and make his twisted dreams a reality, even if he ends up as nothing more than a face inside the belly of the beast. Marcus Damon, I will destroy you! Number 2, The Digimon Emperor. As always, you can count on humanity to make things a million times worse. Some nice friends you got there, Davis. A child prodigy who saw himself as the rightful ruler of the digital world, Ken Ichijoji kept up the persona of a perfect student as a cover for his villainous activities as the self-proclaimed Digimon Emperor, loving nothing more than turning Digimon into his slaves thanks to the mind control effects of the Dark Rings. And I'm afraid that if you can't play by my rules, I'm just going to have to disqualify you. While he would eventually abandon his evil ways, and join the Digi Destined, as far as human antagonists go, Ken remains the king, or perhaps emperor. <laughs> Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. 
If you're on your phone, make sure to go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Myotismon If you fail me again, my bats will have a new chew toy. You! If Dracula were a Digimon, had an unbelievable amount of swag, and a stubborn refusal to stay dead, then you'd probably get this guy. Not only did he nearly manage to defeat the Digidestined multiple times, bring war to the human world, pull off one hell of a wardrobe, but also, Myotismon is damn hard to get rid of. <laughs> Blown to pieces by Anjuwamon? Just come back as the terrifying Venom Myotismon. Get your demon crotch torn open by War Greymon and Metal Garurumon. Make a dramatic return in the sequel series as Malo Myotismon. What next? What should I do? Show me what you fear. Please, no, not that! Oh. Possessing style, substance, and all manner of delicious evilness, they don't make them like this guy anymore. Who's your favorite Digimon <laughs> villain? Let us know in those comments below. Time to end this. Give them both barrels, Dimonmon. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from Watch Mojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.